In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. The Gospel that we read today is very, very, very special because it's the only time in the Bible where St. Mary talks about her own prayers. We don't see this anywhere. It's the only chapter where St. Mary actually prays and reveals to us what's in her heart. And when she started talking, she talked about the things that she praises God for. You know, there's a difference between thanksgiving and praise. Thanksgiving is like you telling somebody, thank you for the coffee, thank you for lunch, thank you for ride, that's thanksgiving. Praise is more you're praising the full person. This person is so intelligent. This person is so kind. This person is so lovely. This is praise. You're not thanking for a specific act, but you're praising the person as a whole. For St. Mary today, she is praising the Lord for four things. And this should help us when we pray to learn how to praise the Lord. The first thing that she's praising the Lord for, she's telling him because his name is holy. Holy means there's nobody like him. Last week I was in the monastery. I asked one of the monks, I told him, how can we keep our thoughts focused on God all the time. And his response, response shocked me. He's like, what else are you going to focus on? That's his response. What else in this world is worthy for you to focus on beside God? He said, focusing on God is natural. That's normal. God is holy. The first thing that our beloved Mother St. Mary praised God for because He is holy. The second thing that she praised Him for, she said because His mercy is from generation to generation. I was reading yesterday uh, one of the life of the Western saints and she's saying, she said something beautiful. She said, I cannot live without God. But also I feel even though God is fully su sufficient, he would not be happy without me. Mercy. How can we as human, God put these feelings inside of us? God's mercy extends to even the breath we take, the good thoughts we have, the ability to do goodwill. His mercy has been come from generation to generation. Mercy itself is a whole new topic, but it's one of the things that we need to praise God for. He created me before even I knew anything about myself. He created us in His own image. He can go on and on for His mercy that is from generation to generation. That's why in the Tazbaha, beautiful song we pray at the end of Kahk. We tell him, your mercies, oh my God, is more than the sand of the sea. And there's no count. The third thing, which is really interesting, that St. Mary prays, be careful about this one. What did she praise him for? She says, because you scatter the proud and bring down princes. It's a very interesting uh, praise. I think it's really important to understand that pride hits all of us. Remember one time I was talking to a monk a few years ago and he told me pride dies in the tomb. Pride is when you die. Stop. Like this is how this was a very seasoned monk who lived in the monastery for a long time. But what St. Mary is praising God for is that not that he brought, you know, prideful people down, maybe, but also every expectation of human pride, God, for his own children, he brings it down. So that we can learn how to be humble. Imagine in your life, the greatest things to praise God for, God, that you humbled me. That you've changed my expectation that could have made me proud. 
You see, this is the secret why our beloved mother is so humble. Because she saw every time the Lord breaks a wall of pride is an opportunity for praise. Not an opportunity to complain and to be upset and to cry, not at all. The last thing that our beloved mother praises the Lord for, she said, because he feeds the hungry. He feeds eh, the hungry. I was reading Kida, to a life of a beautiful uh, Western saint. She was married, she had children, she had grandchildren. When uh, she was beautiful, so many people wanted to marry her, but she picked a guy whom she felt he's God-fearing. And then she told him, I'll marry you under one condition. So I told her, what is, what is this condition? It, she told him that you would allow me to take communion every day in my life. So it would allow her to go to church every morning to take communion. They told her, sure, they agreed. So she, she even said in her own diary that even he would sit in the morning with the children so she can go and have communion. This beautiful woman who was hungry for God, eventually in her 40s, after her husband died, the Lord used to come to her and talk to her regularly because she was hungry for God. God feeds those who are hungry for Him. No doubt. No doubt. St. Mary is praising God for each time she was seeking Him and he came to her. I remember last time we were in Africa, we went to get a, read the Bible in somebody's house. And after I finished, he told me, Father, can we stand up and praise the Lord? I told him, sure. I tell you, you know why I want to praise the Lord? Well, there are many reasons, but I don't know what's yours. He told me because I've been praying to God for two days to send me his word. I wanted to hear his word. And when you came to my house, that was the answer to my prayer. God feeds those who are hungry for him. Every time God feeds me. For us, we are saturated with spiritual food. Sermons and prayers and liturgies. It's unbelievable rich. And that's why our mother I think that if St. Mary is living in our t day right now, should be thanking God for all the sermons and all the songs and all the things that we all have. She'll be praising God for all these beautiful things. So the four things that our mother praised God for, He is holy, His mercy is from generation to generation, He scatters the proud and all the evil imaginations of the heart, and that uh, he feeds those who are hungry and glory be to God forever and ever.